welcome back to the Reality Report. We have a new guest. This is my friend Piers. And uh, welcome, Piers. We're going to be talking about anatomy, um, new ideas about it. Well, not necessarily new, but ideas which were new to me before I talked to Piers about them. So, um, first of all, what was your what was your way into this? How did you come come upon these ideas? Uh, it was mainly through starting to study um, uh, a, a, a form of touch-based therapy, uh, something called Bowen technique, um, which I studied about six, seven years ago, um, and became a practitioner and just through doing CPD courses, um, the oh, option... What CPD? Uh, just like um, career progressive development or something like that. Uh, just, yeah, and through doing those, there was, there came up the opportunity to do um, dissection studies oh, right. and looking at integral anatomy, um, which is quite a, a, a unique aspect of, of anatomy um, and not the sort of traditional anatomy that's generally done. Okay, so integ integral anatomy... Uh, um, uh, well, as contrasted to how it's been traditionally understood, um, if I'm right, I'm thinking, well, when I grew up, I thought about the body as a, as a collection of parts, as a sort of machine analogy, and this idea that you could sort of dis you could disassemble the body into these discrete parts, and integral anatomy is running counter to that, that view, as I understand it, is that right? Yes, uh, in, yeah, to put, put simply, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it runs counter to... Um, I suppose a lot of reductionist um, ideas about the body. Um, so, I mean, the general perception of anatomy would be that uh, you know uh, you have a, you have a particular muscle; it has an origin and and an, and an insertion, um, and it performs a certain function. How do you mean an origin and an uh, insertion? Basically, where the the two points where where it connects into, okay. into the body. So it's meant to have these well-defined endpoints. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so they, they they regard one end as the origin and the other end as the insertion. Okay. Um, and um, and and yeah, basically that you know you, you would you would look in an anatomy book and it would show you a, a lovely beautiful picture of, of, of say your bicep um, and show you where it connected e at each end and say that it did this particular action, um, which is not wrong, but it's a very small part of the story. Mm. Um, so you know, I mean, very simply, just you know, with the bicep for example, there there's no movement of the arm without the contraction of the opposite trapezius for example so um and and you know th there's going to be fine changes in in contraction with all the the muscles of the body so you're saying you can't move one at least there are muscles which are really clearly linked and, and such that you can't move one without moving yeah, the other yeah and to a lesser extent that's true across the whole it, it is it's true but you know throughout the whole system yeah um you know to, to to some minor degree so this raises the question of what does can we really talk about muscles as Separate entities. Yeah. The idea. So, so in, you know, I mean, the 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 sort of buzz phrase these days is is just that you know, rather than looking at the body as, as three hundred separate muscles, um, then it's better to look at it as just one muscle, um, and and looking at the the connection between the muscles, then you start to reveal that actually the the muscles don't just start and end anywhere, um, and there are all these other lines of of tension going on. And there's all this other connection going on through other materials, through connective tissue, um, mainly, but um, but also you know parts of the muscles that connect to other bits of muscles mm. um, in, in in some areas. So so you can't ever just turn around and and, and just you know, or, or rather the only way that you can m have a, a one muscle is through the use of a scalpel. Um, so you know, in the actual right. human form, oh, so you have to you actually know, cut you, you one out cannot, in order yeah. to. Yeah. So it's up, useful up to a point to take the body, break it down into these separate parts, give them names, study the parts. It's useful up to a point, but if the pro there's a problem, if if you start to believe that that's the complete description, that takes you into some really unhealthy directions. Yeah, um, I mean, I you think could, it, it's it, it, it's a natural progression of reductionist science mm. so you know I'm, I'm by no means saying that reductionist science is is wrong um or, or at any point has been wrong in order to study how the body works then you do have to mm. you know take things as you know in, into smaller and smaller pieces in order to study them in in more minute detail and for that you do need to you know start off using a scalpel um you know you can't look inside the body without opening it up um so you know but as soon as you've done that you have destroyed the integral nature of the body. Mm. Um, so, you know, in, in the, the dissection studies that I've done, it, it's so p 
pertinent it, it, or it, it's so obvious as soon as you're standing there and you're like right okay we're going to make an incision and you decide well it, what do I want to look at and and so you you know you, you say okay I'm going to start looking at the integral nature of the shoulder say but immediately you start cutting into the, the skin mm. you're, you're you're taking away the whole integral structure of, of that that section of the body that you're trying to isolate um, and the more you carry on doing that the more cuts you make the more you're just like well you know how important is this little piece that I'm cutting away here um, and you know and you can start peeling away all these layers most of which is cutting away the connective tissue in order to reveal these more clear structures that we perceive to be the muscles and the bone etc okay so just to break it down we've got the the body's composed of um, muscles there's organs Yep. It's what you're calling connective tissue. Yep. So what would that, and, and, and there's also there's nerve um, there's nerve fibers. Yeah. So th um, there's yeah, there's the the, the four types of, of tissue in the body. Right. Um, so yeah, you've got you've got them all uh, but there's also epithelial tissue. Okay. So there's um yeah, so there's muscle, um, neural tissue, yep. connective tissue and epithelial tissue. So organs, where do the organs fit into that? Are they epithelial? Uh, organs would be well so all the glands are made of epithelial tissue okay. and the organs will be a mix of muscular, oh, like the heart, some yeah, so, muscular, yeah, the muscular yeah the muscular tissue right. connective tissue okay so the word organ doesn't really separate it it's not really a type of tissue it's it's sort of more of a uh, it, it's made kind of made up of parts of those tissue yeah yeah okay but there's many types of connect connective tissue that's what we're going to be talking about mostly here yeah and the most important of these that you've told me about is something called fascia yeah um, have I said that right? Fascia? Uh, fascia? Uh, fascia? Fascia, fascia, yeah. Okay, yeah, right, well, um, so yeah. choose your favourite pronunciation and tell me, tell yeah, me about uh, it. So, yeah, fascia um, is basically just one of the types of connective tissue, um, and there are, there are many others, including things like blood and, and bone. Um, blood? Uh, Yep, blood so, is so a type of tissue. Blood is a type of connective tissue, oh. um, and and yeah, so yeah, bone is as well. That, um, that makes sense. Yeah, but I wouldn't have thought ligaments, of that. Ligaments, tendons. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're all all, connect, all connective tissue. Right. So ligaments and tendons are connective tissue. But fascia, I'd never heard about fascia before I spoke to you, um, and it seems like it's it's everywhere. It completely penetrates the body, and is has a huge role in in the workings of the body. So yeah, it's, it's, well. Yeah. Elaborate, please. Um, so fascia is is divided and subdivided down and down and down. Um, but the, the 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 three main types of, of fascia are um, superficial, deep, and visceral. Okay. Um, so put simply, superficial is near the surface, um, and so that would be mostly the the fascia that's just underneath the skin. Right. Um, so you so you have the um the the epidermis, the dermis, and then you have the superficial fascia on on the inside of right. the of the skin. Um, and that's basically um, holds your, your your skin onto the the underlying um, muscle um, within that, and, and, and hold keeps a, a stable environment. What kind of tissue is the skin? Just out of curiosity. Uh, the skin would be connective tissue. It is connective yeah, tissue, yeah, but connective it's tissue, but yeah. yeah, but fascia holds that connective tissue onto whatever is underneath it, which could be yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. So right. fascia is a, a a particular kind of. Um, connective tissue uh, which is mostly collagen based um, which um, quickly has, collagen mm -hmm. is what's collagen uh, just a, a, a protein okay right so a long yeah, complicated molecule yeah I'm guessing yeah I'll, and there, I'll show there, some images. There, there are lots of different types of, um, of collagen um, and and yeah I can I can um, think we can have a look at some video oh, of, got, of collagen okay. as well. Excellent. Okay, so so the fascia under the skin is one type. That's the superficial fascia. Yeah, and then there was um, the. Oh yeah, so yeah, then the the deep fascia would be the fascia that is um, surrounding uh, all the muscles and and basically holds the muscles together, forms gliding surfaces for the muscle to slide over each other. Um, so you have a, 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 a double bagged fascia between the muscles right. um, to to allow that smooth sliding. Um, you can see that anyone that that. Um, is a, a meat eater. Uh, if you if you get a, a piece of uh, chicken is normally best. If you mm -hmm. get like a chicken breast or a thigh, and you can normally find the, the separate muscles within that. And you sort of peel them um, apart, and there's that and very yeah, thin, yeah, that kind thin of like filmy, filmy stuff. stuff. Yeah, that's, that's basically okay. fascia. Um, and if you look very closely, and if you haven't torn it apart too much already, then you can normally see that there's there's several layers there um, that, okay. that allow that gliding. So if you took all the fascia 
that fascia out of the body, nothing, the muscles wouldn't work. They, they yeah. absolutely they, necessary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a sort of yeah, pocket. They, 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 there would be massive amounts of friction between yeah. the muscles, um, so, so that you'd lose, uh, you know, you'd lose vast amounts of, of energy potential. Okay. Um, the body would probably overheat very quickly, um, and you just end up destroying all your muscles. So it's the muscles. If we if we still maintain the sort of convenient illusion that there are these hundreds of separate muscles each one is ensheathed in a sort of pocket of fascia um yeah but, so the, but that's not it's not just like a lining the, the lining's all kind of inter, interlinked across the body as well yeah um just to, yeah just to say first uh, the so the the fascia is also surrounds the bundles of fibers within the muscle okay. um, and it surrounds the muscle itself um fascia surrounds the the the, the bone mm -hmm. uh, so you have the the periosteum um your bone is is partly made of collagen as well um, so about almost about half your bone um, so uh, in, in, mm. in children then they tend to have a lot more collagen in their bone which is why you get what's called green stick fractures where the bone isn't brittle enough to, to snap right. um, it just it just bends um, and that can cause lots of oh, like when, problems right, like when you try and break a twig yeah it's that's why it's called yeah green yeah, green yeah. stick yeah. Um, so yeah that that would be because young sticks have more cellulose yeah. um, in them um, which is basically the, the the plant oh, equivalent of, of, of right. fascia, um, and um, and yet older people then they have more of the um, what's called uh, hydroxylapatite, which is the the mineral bone content. Um, Hence the brittle bones. Yeah, famously. and so yeah, 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 and so yeah, that's why you know things like well we'll talk about it later, but um, movement and exercise are, are very good for things like osteoporosis and people when they get older, um, in order to stop the build up of um, of of the um, the mineral bone. So that build up is linked to. Um, uh, the lack of collagen. I mean, is that is that's not just a lack of collagen. It's almost like an excess of something. It it can be a, yeah. It can be e either. Just actually. a bit yeah, of can, can, Yeah, can, can be a lack of yeah. collagen. I mean, you naturally lose um, collagen as you get older anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you can get diseases which cause um, you know huge amounts of calcium buildup, um, and and also you can cause there, there can be other conditions where where you just have a lack of collagen. Um, or can't synthesize collagen types, but particularly in, in, in your body. Um, but also lack of movement will, will cause that process as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, within, within the bone, you have what are called osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Um, osteoclasts destroy um, bone and osteoblasts build bone. Okay. Um, and, and they're both function they're both healthy functioning parts of the yes. bone system it's yeah, not yeah, the, yeah. it's a completely natural system yeah so yeah I mean, as, as, as we know your your every cell in your body is constantly being regenerated right um and, and so there has over. to be a mechanism for getting mm. rid of the old stuff yeah. yeah um but it's it's far more complex than just saying that you know your, your each cell just replaces itself mm. um and you're you know you don't stay the same we're not a static condition um you know we're we're, we're a living feedback mechanism and so you know our, our body adapts um, you know as, as well as just aging um, your body also is adapting to the circumstances it finds itself in um, and so within the bone um, the osteoclasts um, are, are constantly breaking up the bone except um, certain areas of the bone which aren't um, or sorry which, which, which are um, creating an electrical charge through piezoelectricity Okay, right. Now this was interesting when you mentioned it the first time. Piezo, piezo electricity, as I understand it, is a physical phenomenon involving uh, electrical charge being generated by crystals being put under pressure. Yeah. So if you yeah. squeeze yeah. a quartz crystal, crystals, yeah. uh, there's a very well understood um, process whereby you get a flow of electrons. So the fact that this was going on in the body, uh, as part of the natural workings of the body, surprised me. So, yeah. what's the crystalline material, and what does That's, the electricity do? Uh, the the crystalline material is the hydroxylapatite. Okay. Um, so, so the bone mer mineral calcium. Right. Um, so, it'd be and worth it, it has a crystalline molecular structure. Yes. Right. Well, you wouldn't see if you look at a bone, you don't see anything you'd call a crystal in the yeah. obvious sense. It's a, a yeah. I mean, what we perceive as crystals um, is. is, is Quite skewed, and um, what we uh, believe is it just called a macro crystal, I think. Right, like um, the, which the ones is, which you see in hippie shops. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's so, yeah. that's where you see um, lots of crystalline structures that are all formed in in a, a, a uniform direction.